City strife, horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sell and spin, and move the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red barn green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light it pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Okay. Hello, everybody. I just got back from being out of town for a few days with my daughter. Had a great time. And I really wanted to do a little video to explain the books that. I feel are really good to have in your library in your sewing room um, and I was just gonna do a list you know Mercy wanted just a list but I think that I need to explain why I want what I want and that way if you can't find the exact edition or the exact book that then you can find something similar in content okay so let me get started all right so first let me get started by saying I have a lot of books a lot of books and they're all here for different reasons but I would say these three are my main go-to's okay this one for figuring out how to get a pattern made this one for general technique for general strategy I would say this is a good strategy book and this one this is my newer one and um, for um, being able to have a quick reference for all kinds of things. So I'm going to start with this one. This it's called Professional Sewing Techniques for Designers. And it's actually a textbook that they use in fashion design school. And so what's kind of cool about this is when you first open it up, from the very beginning, it's written for people who like fashion but don't have any idea about sewing. And they start from ground one and then you know they have a very good index a very good uh, index in the back con table of contents and everything for every single technique and at the end of every chapter they have a well this isn't working troubleshooting type section so um, like this I just opened it up this is a seeming thing a go day thing but at the very end of each section there's a review checklist there's problems my seam is rippling why you know I've got skip stitches why do I have skip stitches you know this is a chapter on seams um, and it'll help you troubleshoot things that way but it has everything from all different ways to put in a zipper all different ways to do fittings to do all kinds of things and sometimes I like to look at this book because it'll give me options like say I have a pattern and I don't like the waistband on it but I'm not too sure what I can what, what I want to do to fix it I can look at I just opened this up to the waistband section and it's going to give you like 10 or 12 different ways to do a waistband and that sometimes inspires me to say hey I like this I think this will work well with that fabric and that design and things like that so that's why I like this book you know it's a newer one most of my books are old but here is a close-up those are the, the the authors but again this was written for people who aren't professionals it says professional sewing techniques but it's teaching people who are not an expert and somewhat new to sewing in the beginning it gets more advanced towards the back um, exactly how to make things work so that's a good one for that type of thing this one is an old bishop method book and i know they've had updates since this edition was made but i kind of like the old ones because they're all all the pictures are on old sewing machines and everything but what she did is teach 
again, starting from assuming you know nothing and then going to master tailoring and fitting in the back. Um, basically teaching you a different way. So like sometimes when I'm making a pattern up and the instructions will say, put the zipper in last. And I will say, no, I don't want to do that. I actually got that from her where you divide a garment up into blocks. So you do all of the back and then you do all of the front and you can get all of those details worked out before you're dealing with the big cumbersome garment all at once. But this book is good because they will go back and show you the old methods of reinforcing seams of, um, you know, putting in zippers so that there's no puckers. You know, I was able to master my lap zippers from this book. She also has a very big section on fitting. I think it is back here. And um, she will go down and it's, you know, it's not you know, big, glossy, flashy pictures. But if you will take your time and read through it, they will explain exactly how to fit things. And this is actually where I learned pivot and slide method before Nancy Zeman, you know, really exploded it in the 80s. Um, this is where that came from. But she goes through with all of the fitting methods and everything and all of that. So you can figure out, okay, I have a certain problem with, you know, every body is different. Every single body is different. So say here, figure problem, short-waisted, gives corrections in general for short-waisted patterns. Figure problem, narrow sloping shoulders, gives those directions, and there's enough of a guide that you can figure it out. So I like this book for that. And then as you get farther in, she goes through tailoring and everything like that. So I really like it. I really like this book. It's handy. You know, it's not glamorous, but there's a lot of good information in there. So you just have to kind of take your time and read through it. What I would suggest is if you get this book, read through it like a pleasure reading book, okay? Because you don't really know what's in here until you've gone through it. And then when you actually need something, you can go back and know where to look for it. But there's, there's gold in here. So anyway, there's that one. And that is the Bishop Method of Clothing Construction. Okay. And then there's this one. This is How to Make Sewing Patterns. Uh, Donald McCune. And there are a lot of different How to Make Sewing Pattern books out there. This is the one that I gravitated towards. And what I like about this, again, um, if you have a pattern and say there's a sleeve and you just don't like that sleeve, but you have a basic sleeve that kind of fits, but you want something totally different, what she's gonna do, oh well, I'm not on sleeves, but it gives extreme, extreme detail on how to measure, okay? And where to measure and everything like that. So this is the um, how to measure Bible here. Um, how to do pants so that they'll fit. Um, things like that. And so let's say once you have all of your measures taken care of, you can come here and it'll say, okay, there's all these different necklines. How would you change a pattern, a standard pattern, to have a certain kind of neckline? How would you change a yoke of a shirt? And again, it's old school, so it's not big and glossy, but the information is there. So let me find the sleeves, because I tend to gravitate towards the sleeve chapter a lot more. Okay, I found it. So in general, kind of how I use this book is um, like on this page, there's the gray background, and that's a standard pattern, okay? And all of the stuff in the beginning gets you to figure out what your standard pattern size should be. But then he'll take that standard pattern and overlay different ideas. So like say for, you know, a big cape sleeve type thing, so he'll say, okay, this is your standard pattern, and you're gonna cut it like this and open it up like that you know, so you have this shape when you're all done. 
but it's all based off of a shirt or a sleeve pattern that fit you in the beginning. You know, so say if you get a pattern, um, like say this sleeve on this pattern right here, okay, that's a very straight sleeve. But you might say, okay, I have this sleeve, I have this pattern. In general, this sleeve would fit me based on the dimensions. So I can trace out the sleeve from this pattern, and draw all these lines on it, cut it, flare it open like this, and all of a sudden I have a sleeve option that I know will fit this dress that is not offered on here, but it's what I want. And that's how I like to customize things. It's a lot easier for me to customize an existing pattern to something like this than to start from scratch with all of the pattern drafting. But if you wanted to do pattern drafting, all of the information is here. And what is also good about this is he will explain how much ease you need in different things. So if you are drafting, you know, a nice uh, tailored garment, He's going to make sure that you have two inches of ease at this point and two inches here and one inch here and everything so that you'll get proper fit because just just because you can make something fit skin tight on a dress form does not mean it's going to work when it's actually on a human body that is moving so that's a good thing so anyway that is this book okay and those are my big three for reference but sometimes you don't want just reference, you just want inspiration. So then I have a whole other category for inspiration, and I just grabbed a few of them. Um, I have several of these Sewing with Nancy books, and what she had is, over the years she had viewers write in with hints, and then they would sort them out, and they would just put them in, you know? And there's some good things in here. And so this is my, you know, just throw on the coffee table and instead of scrolling through pointless things, I can grab this and just look, look for hints on, you know, how to organize your sewing room, little things to make sewing easier, all kinds of stuff. So I have probably half a dozen of this kind of book. Then there's the Singer books, and I love the Singer books. Um, these are the old ones, and I love these. Um, they are just fun because, again, I like seeing how they used to do it because the way they do it now, a lot of times I think they, they shortcut it and try to streamline it too much where you don't get a quality garment when you're all done, okay? But say these are the old ones, I don't know, what are these, 1950 or something? Well, they'll have, you know, different topics. And so if you see these at uh, used bookstores or eBay or something, that's, you know, where I will grab them. But then in the 80s, they redid all of their books, and there's probably been a couple editions since then. So then there's these were the 80s version. So, so like for this one, this was the old version of their dressmaking and tailoring. Well, and then you got these that are more, you know, more photos, more fun to look at, and everything like that. But again, they're good for reference. These other books have everything I need. Those, those ones that I showed you, the Bishop Method and the Technique book, they have all the, the methods that you really need to construct things. But sometimes when you just want inspiration, going through the Big Black Singer books are, are fun just for reminding yourself about a certain thing, you know? So I've got a lot of those too. And then I have a lot of, of antique books on pattern making and things, but that's not really applicable for, for this discussion. So anyhow, I hope that helps. So if I was to suggest a starter um, library for a sewing room, it would be some kind of reference book technique book. And again, I like this one. Easy to find things, easy to understand. Um, the troubleshooting questions I think would be good for someone who is fairly new to this, you know, how to make an interesting dart pattern, you know, just fun. This for overall strategy and this for customizing your pattern pieces to get the design that you want. So that is it. I hope that is helpful. 
let me know or put in the comments if you have another favorite book that someone else might find interesting. You know, maybe they can learn from that. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life.